A couple five minutes, something like that. Easy, easy peasy. All right. So, Greg, I'm going to get your – Greg, no, that's easy. I can, I can say that name. All right. <laughs> All right, out there, regulars. Hey, we are here at live at the Impressions Expo in Fort Worth, Texas, and I am joined right now by Greg Brown from Cotton Heritage. And uh, Greg, you and I were just talking a little bit here, but uh, I, I want some of our listeners to to know a little bit more about you. So the question that we're asking people here today is, how did you get into this industry? What 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 was the... <laughs> yeah, so give us a little bit of the history. To how did you get into this industry? Some people come in sideways out of a, an accidental way. Some people actually were intentional what was your path it was actually it was from the standpoint of i needed a part-time job i was in college and um there was a distributor called south carolina tees which is no longer around they uh, they had warehouse positions that you could make five dollars an hour and that was in 1984 and 85 okay. and i left there and um had a biology and a math degree and uh, <laughs> did not get in med school they told me I needed to go back and do more chemistry, and I hated chemistry. Yeah. So um, Bill Gregg said, I need you to run my warehouse, and that's how I got started. And um, worked there until about 1996, went on, had a, went to Haynes, Haynes Printables for a while, left there and went to Delta Apparel, and then uh, did my own thing for a while. And then this year I joined, uh, joined Cotton Heritage, and it's been a wonderful um, ride so far, 30, 30 plus years selling a T-shirt. So, yeah, man. Well, hey, so you just started recently with Cotton Heritage. So, so tell us a little bit about Cotton Heritage. Um, you know, I think people are, are pretty familiar with the brand, but but maybe there's a few people that aren't. What 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 makes Cotton Heritage different than maybe some of the other other brands out there? What what's kind of its uh, thing? Yeah, it's niche. Yep. It's um, you know, it all dates back to the name Cotton Heritage. Mickey Scandiva is the president CEO and. He started in 1982, and but over the last 10 years, he's actually developed the Cotton Heritage name. And what we what we decided to do is, um, you know, everybody, you know, it's easy to have a T-shirt. We all know that. Um, but you need to have something that's a little bit better that you want someone to wear each and every day. And right now we've got, um, you know, a 4.3 ounce, a 5.5 ounce, as well as a 6.5 ounce. And probably the key word that goes along with our product is combed ring spun cotton. Yes. So you got a nice feel. You know, if you go if you go into any type of event and you buy, you pay thirty dollars for a t-shirt. You want to be able to wear it. Yeah. And you know, I'm wearing one today. And uh, you know, and it's my favorite t-shirt. And it's um, you know, and we actually expanded that into our sweatshirts as well. We have a seven ounce sweatshirt, an eight and a half ounce sweatshirt, as well as a fourteen ounce. All that is cotton rich with the cotton cotton rich face. So if you're printing it, DTG, DTF, screen print, embroidery, whatever you want, it satisfies the need. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you know, Terry, as you know, yeah, he he had to run off to a, a show over there, but you know, Terry to me is my my DTG go to guy, right? And uh, he's like, if you want to print a good DTD shirt, get Cotton Heritage. That's what he always tells me. That's a wonderful thing. And, you know, Terry and I go way back as well. And, and one thing about Terry, and, uh, you know, I've learned it very well, is that um, he tells the facts as they are. Yeah. And yeah. Cotton Heritage is a true garment that a printer is going to love. And then on top of that, then it goes on to the consumer that they're going to ask for it again as well. Yeah. Okay. So I have one last question for you, and then I'll let you get back back to the show here. But we always like to ask that next question. Okay, we know why, well, how you got here, right? But what keeps you coming back? You, you mentioned maybe you were gone away a little bit. Yeah, wh why do you stay? Why do I stay? Because of events like this. You meet new people each and every day. You know, I just tell people, you know, because I got kids and they always say, Dad, you've been selling T-shirts for a long time. You know, and you have a transition. You have about every three to five years, you have the next wave of people coming in. Yeah. <clears throat> and with that being said, you know, it keeps excitement into um, what you do. You know, I'm getting close to 60 years old, and, you know, um, I still like getting up every morning and, you know, selling selling a T-shirt and selling a sweatshirt. And um, probably that's the thing that keeps me coming back. I love it. I love, I love it. it too. Ah, right, Greg, great to meet you. Yeah, good talking to you guys. Take care. Take care. All right. We, we've got one more guy that we're going to – oh, you know, sorry there, Greg. we got one more guy that we're going to get in here. Yep. Come on in. Hey, there he is running over because it's yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. So some of you guys are familiar with this gentleman. Um, he has been 
on our show regularly when, when uh, but not regular. well, not, not too regular. Yeah, too oh, that's a, well, that's a whole different show. Um, so <laughs> yes, <laughs> we digress a lot when we hang out. Um, so Hawk and I go, go way back. Um, yeah. So I think I like this, uh, this arrangement. I think this looks better than that last guy. The, the pink shirt guy. Yeah, the pink shirt guy. Pink I know. It, when he's not here, we can t- say these things. All right. Well, Hawkeye, I know you, uh, it's actually getting, seems to be okay. A little busy here at the yeah, show. A little busy. It's good. Um, uh, yeah, the crowd seems, and, and these the shows are, I think, coming back. Yeah. They, people seem to be in, uh, intrigued about new stuff and wanting to expand their business and buy new equipment. Yeah. So it's 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 encouraging. Um, it's a, also seems like a very slow process, but we're getting there. Yeah, yeah we are getting there. Yeah. So one foot in front of the other absolutely absolutely <laughs> all right well i want to get you back over to your booth over there you guys got some cool looking stuff going on and and take yeah take care of my tv all right um <laughs> I, i've got plenty of room in the car for it i told you this all right that's right that's fine that's fine it'll be perfect it. so what we're doing here at the show is we're asking people a couple of questions and the first question is how did you get into this industry what what was your your entry point and then we'll we'll get into the next question after that do we still talk about that what what you can talk about with what can you you know because i know there's some litigation and things like that <laughs> that's, right. that's right well i got in uh, and, and meeting you and, and terry both at uh, u.s screenworks yeah. um the company i was working for was offset printing that was my my natural background was offset printing um and they he was ex- trying to expand into a new business platform and got some of the T-Jets, got the T-Jet 2, which was a fantastic machine, despite most people, and we'll just digress from there. Um, but I learned how to use them. I learned, no, 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 it wasn't the three. I got in before the three and got out because of the three. <laughs> Again, I digress. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, so, so we got into that. I learned how to use it. It came down to the classes, met you guys. And then um, we had the, that that employer, uh, we had uh, different philosophies. I thought I should continue to work there. He did not. And then, um, <laughs> it is a different. <laughs> yeah, right. I seems like uh, you know. Uh, so we, uh, I called uh, Scott and you know you guys, and, yeah, yeah. and I, I could see in that that realm of business, the the DTG business exploded, right? Yeah. Um, and and I wanted to get on that train and and hanging out with you guys and, and being able to do that. Um, opened up that, you know, I, I started working with you guys and it just, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, I, I love it. It's, it's great. I am now with br- uh, Brother. Uh, we've got some great products, obviously. We, we've been, they've been in the business just as long as, um, well, a little bit longer than we have, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 about five longer, minutes. Yeah. yeah about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Again, back to the litigation. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it, and one of the things that, uh, you know, really stood out because, yeah, you've got that creativeness, you know, you understand what 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 works and what sells, but you also have a really good technical background. I mean, not maybe not background, but just technical ability, Correct. because, I mean, you've kind of been in that repair side, too. I mean, That's doing where I maintenance. started. And now I, I, now I'm sales. I, I thought I'd, I'd try something within the same world. Right. And a lot of that technical stuff does bleed over to the sales side and and back and forth. So it was it was a natural progression for me because I have a personality. And <laughs> it able <laughs> pause for applause. Yeah. Um, and so being able to take that and, and having a conversation with somebody who may have get, has equipment and wants to see the next thing and saying, they're like, well, what's the real difference? And you're like, well, you know, if you this, this, and that, yeah. right. That's really where we're going to find the differences. And that's why you probably should come with us now. Yeah. Right. So, so it does help out in, in, with the sale and being able to kind of fall back on that. But I, I don't do any uh, real technical work anymore. I'm, I'm just, I keep, I know enough to stay in the game and I get questions and, uh, kind of triage stuff as it comes through, but otherwise we got a great support staff that takes care of all that stuff for us. So, but well, you said you don't do any technical work anymore. Yeah. You just don't technically work anymore. I don't technically work anymore. I could. <laughs> <laughs> That's what salespeople do, right? We don't work. I saw you, Terry. Yeah. Right? That's what I uh, do. Yeah, they don't work. <laughs> all right. So I do have one more question sure. for you before we let you go. Um, it, and this is kind of like the question that sometimes we forget to ask ourselves and we wake up and going, well, why am I here? So 
well, why do you stay? Because you've been around this now. I've been around this since 2006. I mean, it's, you know, look at DTG started 2004, 2005. It really became a thing. And, and um, uh, much like uh, Greg just said, I, it's the people. It really is. It's meeting these people, talking and helping them. I, I, I don't want to be that size of guys. You burn and turn, right? I, I like building relationships. I like helping people. And so that really, in this market, in this garment decorating world, people are great. I mean, they really are. I mean, you know, they, they, they're forgiving and they want to work with you and they want to, they want to do it just as much as you want to make, help them. Right. So it, it really does work out. And uh, I, I would say there was um, a transition period uh, a few years ago, you know, this, that kind of thing, you know, yeah, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And I, the, the thought of not being able to get back into this was, was tough. I was like, I don't, I don't know anything now. I know this and I want to stay here. It, it, then this is really it. And I, the trade show at, atmospheres, I love doing trade shows um, it, because even if they're not looking at your stuff, they may go, oh, wow, that is awesome. What is that? Yeah. And you have a two or three minute conversation and they're like, wow, that's great. I'll keep that in mind, whether they do or not. But that that connection is really kind of cool as, as they as they want to learn products, too. So, yeah. well, we're glad that you're here, man. So uh, thanks for and thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm glad you're here in the industry, but yeah. I'm also glad that you're here with the two regular guys or, or the, the best. Yeah, I don't wear pink shirts. So <laughs> one of the two regular guys yeah, that's yeah, fine yeah. that's fine We're good. we've got the real the, the, the workhorse over here that's he, there he is <laughs> all right well thank you so much sir it's great to see you and uh we'll uh, uh good work. i hear a lot of good things about you guys doing this and and, and it's growing and it's we're kind of cool to see. we're trying it out you know we're gonna see if it Give sticks it yeah this, this thing, these kids call it the podcast is that what that is i don't understand we're just talking into the ether of the world and People are going to listen to this? It's crazy. Crazy. All right, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. All Appreciate right. It. I'll be okay. over for my TV later. <laughs> All right. Still on the wall. That's right. Okay. All right, you guys. So there we go. We had a couple more guests and a little bonus content. Hey, there may be more. So stay tuned to the Two Regular Guys channels on Facebook. And you can also find us on YouTube or just head over to our website at tworegularguys.com.